Uh, hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about my project. Our project is the uh, recurrent neural network again and for the general voice conversion. And we are Hao Jun, Gao Yi, me and uh, Kun Jie. So our, uh, our outline we will first introduce what is voice conversion and then talk about the common approaches applied on this task. And then talk about the data set we use in this project. And later, explain our architecture and our approach. Finally, then our result and the future works. So, what is voice conversion? Uh, it's really easy to understand based literally, just like voice convert. So, we want to do is we want to convert the source speaker to the public speaker. And we want the generated output to be perceived as a sentence output by the public speaker. So then let me give you a short explanation. So suppose that um, there's a girl called Wendy, and she say, I feel good. And there's a guy called Tony, and he say, oh, you're handsome. So we want the generated output it's also say I feel good, but it should be sounds like Tony. Yeah. So I think everyone has a uh, has no Kerman. It's a pretty popular animation uh, from Japan. So every time Kerman will uh, <laughs> and, sorry, uh, Kerman will sorry, Kerman will say I'll do, do some training, like for each of our voice. So that is exactly what the voice conversion is. I think it's more easy to understand. So uh, common approaches on solving this task, like more basic one will be uh, some Gaussian natural model or Peter Markov model, and even like Gaussian regression. And more recently, maybe use recurrent neural network to solve the voice conversion problem. But like, if we use the recurrent neural network, we have uh, the data set have to more limitation. We have to require your data have to be content consistent, and also you have to be alignment. So uh, alignment here means that uh, if your one data say I feel good, and the other say I feel good, so these two data is not aligned, and usually they will use DTW algorithms in the preprocessing stage to do alignment in advance. Yeah. So we hope that uh, by using the, by adding the grant structure, and we can uh, solve the voice conversion problem without the unparalleled data. So our data set used in this time is the voice conversion challenge in the 2016. And it include 10 different people, including five source speakers and five target speakers. And there are like three women to men and two women to men. So in training, you will have 162 alternates. Alternates here means that uh, uh, you could imagine as a sentence. There's 162 sentences, and the version will have 54 sentences. So uh, the structure here is we, we will first use the feature extractor called the and it will help us to extract three parts. One is the spectral part, the other is the fundamental frequency, and the other is the epiotic component. But our structure will mainly transform on the spectral part. And later, the frequency component will go through the linear transform, and the epiotic component will remain the same. And then we do the synthesis on the three parts, and it generated the output we want to hear. So our structure is like this. It's a variation auto encoder with the improved fabric gain. So <laughs> this one is pretty, really, I think it's the same as the team two, right? The like a little similar. So, so uh, let me keep it simple, because we, we can transfer between two people uh, from, uh, we can transform between any two people. But to explain the structure, I will, I will just keep it simple. So suppose we want to transfer one from one source speaker to one target speaker. So during training process, we will first focus on the VAE, uh, VAE structure. 
So we will uh, put the source spectral from it and then give it corresponding label. And then you will output the SS pump. And we want the reconstructed spectral frame to be really similar from the input. So here we use mean square error to evaluate this one. And also in the top and speaker part, you will also do exactly the same thing. And also use mean square error to evaluate this part and this part. And the loss of the rational for encoder, well, just the loss of adding target and the source to to optimize the parameter in the original overcode. So, so here is the mixture error loss. And here we'll do the KL divergence loss to evaluate on the new and standard deviation from here. So later, uh, after we, after we, uh, we did the version of the new we will pass, we will then update the discriminator parameter. So in this, progress, we will put the source spectral frame. But here, we will put the target label, because we wanted to generate the spectral frame which should be similar to the target. We don't want it to be similar to the source. So, but how do we evaluate this reconstruct is good? So we have to put the ground truth of target spectral frame. We evaluate like how similar it is. So, okay. so um, initially, we think since the voice is a time sequence information, so we think maybe recurrent neural network will work better. So we first try the recurrent neural network structure to uh, apply on the structure. But then like, it's how to reconstruct the result. And we have tested on like, several parameters, maybe modify the time step, the uh, hidden size, within the LST load and also the batch size. So we didn't get the result. And maybe the reason is just like uh, Professor Yong Yang said maybe it's like cancer is not long enough or something. So you wanna uh, overcome the result of the fully connect then structure. So yeah we are sad. So, uh, so let, later we focus on is the the modify the Structuring in the encoder and generator is the fully common structure. And later I will show you the result of the generator so far. And here we're going to talk about some little tricks on training this VAE uh, game. So we will first uh, train on the auto encoder because we want, we want this one to be robust enough and then later you want the discriminator to let it, uh, to let it, to let it, to evaluate the XT and the XT pump. And during on training the auto encoder, we found something interesting is that when updating the MSC loss and the KL divergence, if we update the, the both in the same time, it will not like really good. But if we first update the MSC first and then update KLD later, you will like, get a good result. And then we think the reason here is because uh, the KL divergence will reach more stable in the early iteration. And if it reach more stable, it means that it will generate pretty similar the new and the standard deviation. So that means that when this kind of thing as an input to the decoder, the decoder cannot get really diverse input. So you cannot generate uh, a reconstruct result, maybe, yeah. So that is our experience with all these kind of tricks. And so the trainer is very common, just five times discriminator and one time generator. Okay, so this result is pretty bad. And <laughs> yeah, so okay. They came and went. This is a source speaker. Where she fell very slowly. This is a target speaker. So what we want is we want to generate a voice. We we'll say she came and went, but it just sounds like a, a man. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one is really bad. It's like a noise. Okay, but I'll show you a DNA result. So the same. They came and went. So speaker. 
where she fell very slowly. I guess because, and it's <laughs> so this one is without the tricks. Is uh, we update the KLB and NSE at the same time. But if we first update the NSE and then later update the both, you have to hear very carefully. It's like so we can hear that the, the sound of can is more clear than before. Okay, so the following four sound will be the sole speaker and the reconstructed result. Rows of vine clad servants' cottages. Rows of vine clad servants' cottages. Or she fell very slowly. Or she fell very slowly. But there was no sign of any wind. But there was no sign of any wind. For he declined it quite correctly. For he declined it quite correctly. Yep, so here is the result we got so far, and it sounds okay. <laughs> So they came and went. <laughs> so but there was no sign of any wind. For he declined it quite correctly. Okay, so our conclusion is that it's really interesting because if you want to change two people, uh, you don't have to let them say the same word, but you can still transform it. And uh, voice conversion has many applications, including Cross language, text to speech, or sound in the movies or game, or even you can use only uh, assistant technology for the speech impaired. So it's like really promising work, and and then we we can still work on it. So future work is uh, maybe we can try not using the spec information because the face well lost and. Maybe you can just put in a low signal to see if the reconstruction result is good. And, and we can also do our general multiple voice conversion. So, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think the result is good. And and my question is, uh, first of all, have you checked whether your BAE can reconstruct the original input? Uh, 
Yeah, how much is the time do you think in general? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, so uh, how are you doing? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so following for that, these comments, and then we can try and see more such that uh, we can uh, be more cheaper to the patient. So I'm uh, going to be able to tell you the trend. So, so is this trend uh, sequential uh, in single machines or the trend in parallel? Single single. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's like it's like that thing is inverse.